Welcome to RIT Talk. We're here to raise awareness about mental health. One way of doing that is to talk about it. And that's what we're going to do. Have a great day. Don't quit. And keep pushing forward. Today, we're going to be talking with Tyler. Take it away. Um, so, so I guess you, uh, my name is Tyler Lee. Yeah. Um, I I started out as a volunteer in Tacna, probably around 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. Um, I failed out of college and decided to go be a volunteer. I, I don't know. <clears throat> don't take political science. <laughs> Okay. I can't. Fair enough. That was, that was my worst decision of my life, but uh, it actually made a good point. It brought me to where I am today, though. Um, <clears throat> I started volunteering. I fell in love with it, um, and uh, I decided I want to do it full time. So, okay, I've been full time with Royal Metro for a little over three and a half years now. So, I love it. I don't think I would choose to do anything else. Um, honestly, and I tell that every day, you know, I mean, where, where else can you go to, and you make your bed and take naps, you know, <laughs> who else gets paid to sleep? <laughs> now we don't sleep all the time, but I mean, sleep is important. Sleep is important. Snowbirds are back. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. So, uh, but, uh, I moved here in 2008, I think from okay. Hawaii. My dad was uh, Navy. You actually probably met my father. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's funny, growing up, he was in the Navy. My family's all Navy. Grandfather, okay. dad, brother, and I was like, ah, I'm going to go be a firefighter. <laughs> so, Change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I guess my grandfather, great-grandfather, was a volunteer back from back in Iowa somewhere, wherever he was, I think. I didn't get the full story, uh, but uh, that was pretty cool. Once I started volunteering, that came out. But uh, I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, uh, off topic, my phone keeps turning off. Um, yeah, I just, I fell in love and wanted to do it full time. So right. what, what drew you, what drew you to it? What drew you to the fire service? I don't know something about helping people. Um, okay. I just had that. I don't know. I guess you say drive to want to want to be there, want to do. And it's weird because, like, you know, some people you don't even know these people. Um, mm -hmm. it, <clears throat> I was always told, you don't know you can do the job until you got your worst call. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> it was like December. I forget the year, but it was the the week of the week before Christmas. This little girl. Her, uh, so they call us for. Uh, uh, I was like, I was with Tacna, and they were asking for assistance, and uh, I was <clears throat> hanging out at my buddy's house, and we get the call like I don't know, probably like six six thirty in the morning and they can't find this lady's address and this lady can't tell us about her address. So we go and we finally <clears throat> narrow it down and, and it was literally right across the street from the station. You, we pulled out and it was like one street over and we go up and she's behind this field and her husband, uh, we got there. He was, he was DOA, uh, right out the bat. And, uh, so we grabbed, it was, it was the living situations were terrible. <clears throat> but we get out, take the kids out. And this, I think one, she wasn't even in preschool and the other kid was in kindergarten and it's freezing cold outside. I'm still in my, I'm my turnouts cause it was, I was cold. And uh, so I, you know, trying to distract the girls, the little, the kid, the little girl and the, the, the son. And I took them over to the fire truck and I was letting them jump in and out of it and do whatever. And, she looked at me and, and she goes, I can't wait to go home. 
I can't wait to go tell the kids at school that you helped save my dad. And instantly I was like, yep, I'm out. Uh, we did not save your dad. He was, yeah, that was, I mean, and she told us, she told us straight up, like when we got there, like there was a investigation that YC so ended up doing because she said, yeah, dad's supposed to take uh, 10 pills at night. And he took 11. Mm. <clears throat> and then the wife was like, well, at 430, he was snoring. And then the paramedic was like, dude, there's no way if he, at 430 he was snoring, he wouldn't be like this. So a rigor and pulling and all that stuff had set it in. So that turned hostile real quick because the mom and mom lived right across the street. And so the grandmother started calling out the wife and it just, we're like, all right, we're going to go ahead and go. <laughs> you don't need us anymore. We're leaving. <laughs> so, but that, uh, that little girl stuck with me. You know, for, I mean, even today, like, I, it's, it's crazy. So they were like, well, there's two options. You could either suck it up or you could talk about it. And I was like, okay, I don't know. Like at the end of the moment, I was like, whatever, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I just said, there's, that's not possible. Uh, about a week later, I was at my sister's, uh, uh, Christmas recital and I lost it in the middle of like it was funny because my mom works at uh, at the time she worked at uh, St. Francis so I just went up to my mom the, 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 the Christmas thing was over and I just gave her a hug and I just like lost it right there in the middle of the, the church nobody said anything Nobody even like kind of acknowledged it. It was, it was kind of nice because I didn't even want to acknowledge it. And then that was it. I was fine. Moving on. So after that, I was like, you know what? I think, I think this is my, if this was my worst day, I think we could do it. We could do this. So I don't know. Something about driving big fire trucks is fun too. <laughs> so but that's, that's kind of where it started for me is I just, I failed out of college and, Found something that I was like, I might be able to, this is what I want to do with my life, you know? So it took me a while to get going, but I think I, I finally just said, you know what, I'm going to get my EMT and start from there. And it just took off. Okay. Cool. What, uh, what would one thing that you think could help with uh, firefighter mental health? Culture. Or I feel like, and and I don't know if this is just where I'm at, but I and I, it sounds bad when I say it, but I don't know how how else to express it. But uh, we eat our young. Yeah, I, it's you know it's like as a probationary firefighter, you're literally like do as I say, not as I do. And as much as like somebody tells you to do something, you're you, you know what I mean. It's just. There's no, I feel like there's no, not a lot of people are willing to help you. They, they tear you down before they bring you up. And I don't understand that. Um, I feel like that's, that's something in our culture that really has to stop. And I feel like people are like, oh, you know, like they do it because if you don't like this job, then you'll just quit, you know, like, and it's like, to me, it was like that in my fire academy. It was like, that. even in football, like everyone treats you like shit and it's acceptable. And I feel like that's something that's got to change. Personally, that's, that's how I see it. Mm. I like it. Yeah. It's I'm not sure where that, um, I'm not going to dig into it right now, but yeah, I'm not sure where that comes from. I, yeah. I understand. I understand what you're saying. So, all right. Is there anything, uh, anything else you wanted to add? Um, honestly, I, I know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to think about it, you know, and I was asking my wife, I was like, what do I talk about? But kind of just, I'm not really sure. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll keep it at that for now. No problem. Short, cool, cool. sweet, short, sweet to the point. All right.
Well, thanks for coming on and sharing with us. You bet. Appreciate it.